Good morning. It's Thursday, the 31st of March, 2022. We're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book bolstered by 1662. And that means we're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved of this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. He is... Uh, a great God. He's made us himself our God, our shepherd king, our savior. Uh, shall we not open our ears to, and our hearts to hear his voice, to know his ways, to enter into his rest? The Psalms for the 31st day of the month, uh, we repeat the Psalms for the 30th day of the month. Um, and so we're on page 519 with Psalms 144, 145, 146. 144 is is a, a, a composite psalm. It's formed of various bits and pieces from earlier psalms. 
And it is uh, uh, a prayer, really, of the Messianic king, uh, the heir of David, uh, on his own behalf and on his people's behalf. So it's we hear in, in this in this psalm the voice of Christ and his church. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my hope in my fortress, my castle and deliverer, my defender in whom I trust, who subdueth my people that is under me. Lord, what is man that thou hast such respect unto him, or the son of man that thou so regardest him? Man is like a thing of naught, his time passeth away like a shadow. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth thy lightning, and tear them. Shoot out thine arrows, and consume them. Send down thine hand from above. Deliver me, and take me out of the great waters, from the hand of strangers, whose mouth talketh the vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of wickedness. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God and sing praises unto thee upon a ten-stringed lute. Thou hast given victory unto kings, and hast delivered David thy servant from the peril of the sword. Save me and deliver me from the hand of strangers, whose mouth talketh of vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of iniquity. That our sons may grow up as the young plants, and that our daughters may be as the polished corners of the temple, that our garners may be full and plenteous with all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no decay, no leading into captivity, and no complaining in our streets. Happy are the people that are in such a case. Ye blessed are the people of the Lord for their God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 145 is read on the Feast of Pentecost, or Whitsun Day, very appropriately, because it's a psalm uh, about the praises and thanksgivings of the Church for the wonderful works of God. And that's, of course, precisely um, what the Church, uh, the disciples, by the power of the Spirit, um, began to do on the Feast of Pentecost. They began to publish the Gospel. I will magnify thee, O God, my King, and I will praise thy name for ever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee, and praise thy name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord, and marvelous worthy to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another, and declare thy power. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works, so that men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous acts, and I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thine abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving unto every man, and his mercy is over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power that thy power, thy glory, and mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto men. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all ages. The Lord upholdeth all such as fall, and lifteth up all those that are down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and fillest all things living with plenteousness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, yea, all such as call upon him faithfully. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will help them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but scattereth abroad all the ungodly. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh give thanks unto his holy name for ever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. Uh, this psalm, a wonderful psalm, contrasts the uh, trust in human things uh, with trust uh, in the infinite 
power and goodness of God. O put not your trust in princes, nor in any child of man, for there is no help in them. For when the breath of man goeth forth, he shall turn again to his earth, and then all his thoughts perish. Blessed is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, and whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, who keepeth his promise for ever, who helpeth them to right that suffer wrong, who feedeth the hungry. The Lord looseth men out of prison, the Lord giveth sight to the blind, the Lord helpeth them that are fallen, the Lord careth for the righteous, the Lord careth for the strangers, he defendeth the fatherless and widow. As for the way of the ungodly, he turneth it upside down. The Lord thy God, O Zion, shall be king for evermore, and throughout all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 34th chapter of the second book of Moses called Exodus. Chapters 32, 33, uh, we began this, uh, the uh, rebellion of the uh, uh, worship of the golden calf, how that was a crisis in the formation of uh, the covenant, uh, brought it into um, jeopardy. Uh, we In chapter 33, we saw Moses' uh, uh, insistent and effectual intercession before God. Um, and now um, in chapter 34, um, the answer to Moses' prayer, God's revelation of himself and the renewal of the covenant. So you might say from the beginning, God's covenant with his people has been a new covenant. One founded not upon human faithfulness, uh, but on God's graciousness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hear thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up, Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. God, that is, both merciful and just, and how those, of course, are reconciled, is not apparent until you come to the cross. And Moses made haste, and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my people, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. See, so it's Moses who finds favor, but the favor is to extend to the whole people, the sinful people. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such have not been done in all the earth nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But he shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and when call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. 
thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine, and every firstling among my cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. But the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou redeem him not, then shalt thou break his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earing time and in harvest time thou shalt rest. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the Lord of God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land, when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words. For after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not, the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron, all the children of Israel, saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Here endeth the first lesson. O oh, 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 let the earth bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye mountains, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye wells, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O let Israel bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the 31st verse of the 8th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Here um, we are in the thick of controversy between Jesus and and his opponents in the temple courts. And it is a difficult uh, discourse to read, both um, sometimes to follow the train of thought and uh, and also the emotions um, uh, that are uh, flowing. Um, and yet, of course, it is also uh, remarkably clear the fundamental issues that are at stake. Um, 
You know, Jesus does not have the luxury of time. He must bring things to a point of clarity to the greatest extent possible. Um, a a uh, line, uh, a judgment must be rendered one way or another about who he is and what he's come to do. Um, and that judgment made by human beings submitted to the Supreme Court of Heaven. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? So there's a good example of Johannine irony, the uh, way in which what Jesus says, though lucid and clear in its own terms, simply passes by uh, his hearers. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant, the slave of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. They said, and said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it, the father of lying. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. There it is, because he tells them the truth, they believe not. That, that's, the, that's what he's calling them on. Which of you convinceth or convicteth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Here endeth the second lesson. So, uh, we see foreshadowed here, of course, the cross, um, the um, rejection of Christ in the temple, uh, the attempt to lynch him, um, 
on that side. On the other side, we see what it is that Jesus brings to the cross, one who cannot be convicted of sin, who is entirely free from sin, one who is also um, uh, sent from God to give life to those who believe in him, and one who is himself um, divine, before Abraham was, I am. And so um, we have all the elements, uh, sinless humanity, um, uh, salvific uh, purpose, and uh, the divine infinite, the infinite worth of his divine person, all will come together to make his death an efficacious sacrifice for sin. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, or by the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. What we've heard with our ears, let us believe with our hearts and confess with our lips as we acknowledge um, uh, our God and our Savior in the words as our own, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and one another and those we love and the whole church and people of God to his watchful and gracious care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world that God's ways may be known unto them in the gospel, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by his good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries in their peace, order, and good government and for the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. Especially do I bid your prayers to the people and government of Ukraine, for their protection and deliverance from the malice and cruelty of their enemies, uh, for their courage and skill in the fight, and for uh, the weapons to fight and other support needed to fight effectively. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, for their faithfulness of witness and worship, especially those under pressure and persecution, for their fruitfulness and good works of hope and charity, of prayer and service. And in this land, especially a time of fasting and abstinence and self-denial, of prayer and the giving of alms. Bid your prayers for the confirmation uh, candidates here at St. John's, both youth and adults, that they may be indeed stirred up and strengthened in a lively faith of their own. And for Christian parents and the ministry of Christian parenting, they may raise up their children in the faith and fear of the Lord. Those who suffer in mind, body, or estate, that they may have patience under their sufferings 
and a happy issue from all their afflictions. I bid your prayers for those undergoing surgery today uh, and their recovery from it, and of course those who are also recovering from prior surgery. I bid your prayers for those who are dealing with cancer and its therapies. Uh, for those dealing with debilitating infirmity like Parkinson's disease, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, um, a challenge of sobriety, mental illness, depression, burden of anxiety, uh, for the orphans, the abandoned, and the abused, for the hungry and the homeless, for the refugees and captives, for the wounded and the dying, for caregivers, for healthcare workers, both doctors and nurses, for all women in childbirth, for women expecting children and the children they're expecting, for the very elderly, and the very young and the most vulnerable. We remember before God, those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and at rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. And this day, that being under the protection of the divine mercy, strengthened by the Holy Spirit, guided by his holy word, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do, um, in all things according to his perfect will, uh, being renewed in the likeness of his Son, that we may uh, be found in him when he comes again in glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that we who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished, but the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says to those who believe in him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let it be our resolve um, and prayer by God's grace that we may indeed continue and abide in his word and be free indeed. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his perfect will.